into the picture of upper and lower probability distributions as we can precisely understand how upper and lower probability distributions evolve over time and eventually degenerate into a joint distribution once a classical uh, description of the system is uh, possible. This transition from the quantum to the classical is much harder to understand from the point of view of quantum logics. Yeah? It's not at all clear, at least to me, correct me if I'm wrong, what it means that a non-Boolean algebra somehow degenerates over time into some, some Boolean algebra. Yeah? One, one may be able to model it, but I haven't seen these models. Yeah? So typically what people are doing is they look at a quantum domain and describe it with a non-Boolean algebra and they use a Boolean algebra for, for the classical part. Yeah, but the two are connected. There is a transition between the quantum and the classical and uh, uh, playing around with the probabilistic structure which is defined over an algebra and not uh, with the um, logic uh, beyond seems to uh, be the much more natural uh, approach uh, here. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I'm doing well on time, I see, so I can take a bit of time with my last substantial slide here. There is, of course, lots of open questions. I said in the beginning that that's a research program that Pat somehow uh, kicked off, but that's not uh, yet uh, terribly uh, popular. So, there's lots of things to do. Uh, for example, uh, what one would like one, like one to do is to generalize the results that we obtained for EPI states to other states. Pat did work on the GHC state that was mentioned uh, before, so it's natural to do this and to look at, at more complicated states and see how they behave over time and which uh, uppers and lowers are associated with the dynamics of these uh, systems. The most important question, perhaps the most pressing question uh, to me, however, is uh, that one should better understand what upper and lower probabilities in quantum mechanics actually mean. Yeah? Remember that classically there is this Wally betting uh, interpretation, yeah? which is uh, fairly straightforward, but it presupposes that there is a joint distribution. So if there is no joint distribution, what, what are you actually doing here? So, so that, that doesn't work. If we simply consider uppers and lowers as some kind of bookkeeping uh, thing, yeah, which that produce measured correlations or so, then we don't have to, to go for uppers or lowers. We could also go for, for negative probabilities, which, which Pat likes uh, a lot uh, uh, these days. Um, so uh, it would be interesting to understand better what uppers and lowers mean. Pat seems to have a theory that, that shows that the upper-lower language is sort of equivalent to the negative probability language, in which case we probably don't have to worry too much about the interpretation. But anyway, so that is something uh, to, to look at. And as I said already, the relation to, to negative uh, probabilities, uh, which of course also fit nicely into the decoherence picture. It seems intuitive that we can also propagate negative uh, probabilities somehow over time, and uh, of course become zero or whatever uh, at some uh, point. Another interesting question which I'm currently working on is uh, this uh, regime between two square root of two and four. Yeah? Remember we are looking at this quantity f here yeah? and the expectations values can are between uh, minus one and plus one. So in principle this guy could uh, be four. Right? <laughs> it turns out that with quantum mechanics we only get to uh, uh, two square root of two, uh, not, not higher. Yeah? But there is, there is recent interesting work by Popescu and collaborators which show that you can get a quantum speed up or so if you explore this regime uh, greater than two square root of two. So that's quite interesting. And from our point of view, it would be good to see how qualitatively uh, uppers and lowers change in that domain. Yeah? So we can also fit uppers or so for correlations which 
give us uh, an f greater than 2 square root of 2. But it would be interesting to see which uh, physical property has to be added to account for the quantum regime or so. Yeah? Otherwise, uh, um, it's not quite, I mean, it's, 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 it would be uh, uh, um, surprising that, that a mathematical structure fits, fits so nicely directly onto uh, uh, the quantum machine. Anyway, so there is uh, things uh, to do. And uh, what I also find interesting to explore in future work is the analogy between learning and, and decoherence. Yeah? So these intuitive pictures that, are, that I showed you here, that um, if you toss a coin, yeah? so initially you don't know anything about this coin, so you would say, okay, lower zero, upper one, then you flip your, your coin, and as a result of this, uh, the uppers and lowers converge to one half, for example, if it's, if it's a fair coin. Yeah? So, so learning, yeah, makes, uh, leads to this convergence of uppers and lowers to a joint uh, probability. Yeah? This, this quantum picture is, is quite similar, with the only difference that at least till here, till they converge, there, there is no joint. Yeah? But the interaction of the quantum system with the environment somehow has the same effect as, as learning. Yeah? So anyway, I mean, that's just a speculation which, which might be interesting to uh, explore in uh, future work. And uh, that's already the end of my talk. Happy birthday and thanks for listening.